Praise be Jesus Christ, and thank you for joining me for Lexio on the Go. Our scripture readings are taken from Romans 6, verses 19 through 23, and the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 7, verses 15 through 21. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Uh, these are the readings for the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. Um, this um, ha has been one of my favorite Bible studies. It's just been really rich, and I've been meditating on it for about two weeks now. Uh, just, uh, and, yeah, it, it's just really rich. So I'm going to kind of take this a few different layers. Um, so probably about four or five different ways we can look at this one thing. So I hope this analogy and this teaching is really helpful, especially as you share it with other people in your life, your children, your spouse, co-workers, uh, just to evangelize and share the good news with people because um, if we can remember it and remember a, a story in a sense or an analogy in our mind, we can kind of uh, start to teach people and it helps us to remember. Um, the first thing to remember with this, uh, the, the, the focus I, I'd like to take on the gospel is but only he that does the will of my Father, who is in heaven, he shall enter the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus Christ comes to establish the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. We've talked about this before, but the kingdom of heaven can be seen as Jesus Christ himself. He is that kingdom. He also comes to establish that kingdom, which is the church that he establishes. Christ and the church are one. Um, and then the kingdom is also heaven itself, uh, eternal life. So, it, you know, he himself is the kingdom. He establishes that kingdom, which is eternal life that dwells within us. And we will experience forever um, with him, hopefully, in, in, for eternity. Um, and then the church that's here. Um, so, but only he that does the will of my Father will be in that kingdom. So we can't just say, Lord, Lord. We have to actually do the will of God. So what we'll be talking about today is how, how do we actually know the will of God? How is it that we can know the will of God, do the will of God? And when that will becomes hard to know and hard to do, what do we do about it? Um, so our, we'll be really focusing on the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit and reflecting on that. Um, but I want to keep that verse in mind. Also, two other verses that I'm not going to read now but due to time, but you, can, you should probably write these down and read them later. And that is Proverbs 9.10. Um, and then also Genesis 28, 17. So Genesis 28, 17 is the story of Jacob. Jacob, if you remember, it's Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. So Jacob is the grandson of Abraham. And it'll be from Jacob. His name will be changed to Israel. And it'll be from Jacob uh, and his 12 sons that, of course, the great nation of Israel will, will flourish. Um, and we'll have eventually, of course, the, the, the line that Jesus will come from. So um, that's, that's the Jacob we're talking about here. And Jacob um, has this vision of a ladder that's uh, on earth going up to heaven and descending and ascending, going up and down, are these angels. This ladder represents Jesus Christ himself. It's a type in the Old Testament, which will be fulfilled in the New Testament, with Jesus Christ himself. So here, when you read this story about Jacob's ladder, Jacob's ladder, this is Jesus Christ himself going up to the Father, right? Jesus is the only way to the Father. There is not several ladders. There is one ladder, Jesus Christ, that bridges earth and heaven. How is it, what are the rungs on this ladder? If Jesus Christ is the ladder himself, what are the rungs on this ladder, the steps? This would be the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So it is the Holy Spirit that helps us to know Jesus Christ, and it is Jesus Christ who helps us know and get to the Father. So let me say that again. The Holy Spirit helps us to know and love and serve Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ, of course, uh, if we know Him, love Him, serve Him, we know, love, and serve the Father. So we have the Trinity here. So we're going to focus on these rungs in this ladder, which is Jesus Christ Himself. Proverbs 9.10 talks about three of these gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Proverbs 9.10 says that um, the beginning of wisdom, fear of the Lord, fear of the Lord, which is a gift of the Holy Spirit, is the beginning of wisdom, which is a gift of the Holy Spirit, and knowledge of the Lord. So it, three of the seven are right there in that scripture verse, that one verse, uh, Proverbs 9.10. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Usually you'll see that. I, I, I've grown up in North Texas, so I see that a lot. Um, fear, if you want wisdom, of course, start with fear of the Lord. And actually, these are the two uh, starting points on this ladder. So fear of the Lord is the first rung. You can't get anywhere on this ladder unless you take that step first, fear of the Lord. 
the last step on this ladder, the last rung, is wisdom. Um, wisdom, we call actually wisdom Sophia, right? Sophia in the Greek. And so Jesus Christ is wisdom incarnate, the Word made flesh. So you can also see wisdom as Jesus Christ himself, perfect union with Jesus Christ. Well, how do you get to that last rung, that, that perfect union with Jesus Christ? You can only start by fear of the Lord. And then it says, uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. Knowledge is going to be the third rung. So I think it's important if you draw this ladder first, you'll see the diagram, but if you draw the ladder, that you start with first rung, fear of the Lord. What does fear of the Lord lead you to? Wisdom, the last rung, seventh rung, and knowledge, the third rung. And then we'll kind of fill in the gaps here. So why is fear of the Lord so important? This is basically, I am a sinner. Admitting that I uh, admitting that I think this is what fear of the Lord is. Fear of the Lord is a gift that will say, heaven is real, hell is real, I'm a sinner, the consequence of my sin is hell, I need to change, I need to repent. Jesus Christ says this, Peter says this, everyone says this, repent, repent, repent. It's always the first step and it's the first rung. But you have to, to be able to have this gift, you have to acknowledge that heaven is real, hell is real, sin is real. There's a consequence of sin. You are uh, susceptible to that consequence because you are a sinner that is capable of sinning and could then therefore be separated from God for all eternity. So that's that fear. It's like, wow, I, I fear, I fear, I see this reality and I fear this punishment and in fact this eternal punishment that I could be due because of my sins. So that's fear of the Lord. What does that do for us? If we, if we really feel like I am a sinner and we really think that it's possible that we could go to hell, we change. We get our act together, right? I want to start doing something different. And so my sin turns into acts of piety, pious acts. So you might see someone that has had a recent conversion. You might see them start doing things like praying the rosary or wearing a scapular or uh, maybe uh, watching some YouTube videos of, of, of some religious things. Maybe they put a, a statue in their house. So they're, they want to do some type of pious acts and do anything. Just try to be holy, right? Uh, be holy and whatever they think holiness is. And so we start to change and start to do these pious acts. Um, of course, there are great pious acts. Prayer, you know, maybe they start praying devotions. Maybe they start reading some, some prayer devotions. But anything to become holy, right? Um, from that action, piety then would be the second rung, the gift of the Holy Spirit, to start doing pious acts. Then we start to desire, okay, I start desiring God's will now. I move from really my will, life of sin, fearing having the fear of the Lord, and moving now to a desire of God's will. But at this point, I only desire God's will. I have to then now know God's will. So that desire moves me to a knowledge, and that's where the gift of knowledge comes in, knowing God's will. Um, how do we do that? And by the way, I'm getting almost all of this, 75% of this talk, maybe 60% of this talk, at least the main idea, the ladder, and matching the gifts up with the ladder is coming from uh, St. Robert uh, Bellarmine. Um, so Robert Bellarmine was a, a great uh, saint in the late 1500s, and he wrote a great catechism called uh, Christian Doctrine. And based on that catechism, uh, a lot of um, the, the Baltimore catechism was based on that catechism. So anyways, he is great. He's also responsible for the Catechism of Trent and just a great, great catechist. One of the best, probably and definitely and maybe the top five, top ten catechist in our faith. So he knows what he's talking about. Very concise, very, very to the point. It's great. Um, okay, so knowledge. He says knowledge is three things primarily. Good books, good preaching, and inspiration. That is so true. How have I, myself, come to a knowledge of God's will in good books? And the number one good book, right? What is the good book? The Bible. So good books and the good book have helped me to know God's will. Preaching, good preaching, awesome priests and bishops. And, and saints, right? The works of the saints and their preaching that we read in books. And then inspiration, the great example of other Christians. How awesome has that to help me know God's will? Maybe even asking them, what is God's will? Um, I remember uh, one, of my, one of my greatest uh, priest friends, he said that don't make a decision at all in your life that's important if you don't have the catechism and the Bible in hand. So you could say that this is what he's talking about here. 
good books, right? Good preaching. And then ask people that you know are holy. So if you're going to make a good decision, know the Bible, know the teachings of the church, and ask people that live the faith. That will help you to know God's will. What about once you come to a knowledge of God's will? Well, now you know it, but are you going to do it? Because remember our gospel, not all those that say, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but those that do the will of my Father. You can't do what you don't know. So third rung, no. Fourth rung, do. What is going to help you do the will of God? The gift of the Holy Spirit, fortitude, right? Strength, like a fort, like a fortress. That's where we get that word. Right? So how, what happens when I start to do God's will? I already know it through knowledge. Now I have to have the gift to actually do it, fortitude. Fortitude is going to help me remove any obstacle and the three biggest obstacles, full attack right on from Satan is the devil, the flesh, and the world. So those are the obstacles that are gonna come my way. As soon as I know God's will and begin to do God's will, the evil one and his demons, and the temptations of the flesh, my own sin, right, the evil works, and the world, the false teachings, the empty promises of the world. These will come in, and I need fortitude to remove those obstacles, to stay the course, steady as I go, right? Continue to go no matter what's happening, no matter how many torpedoes are shot at me. Continue to go steady, continue to go ahead, stay the course. Um, So this is the full attack, and Satan fully attacks us. We have fortitude to fight that off. Um, after Satan realizes that he can't use the full attack, after he realizes that the, that the big bombs are not working, the torpedoes and the big bombs are not working, he's going to then kind of go ninja mode on us. He's going to start uh, being subtle with his attack because the big attack did not scare us. The big attack did not uh, discourage us and we didn't back down. We're continuing to go forward with God's will. So now the subtleness is coming. Now he will start to present good, bad things as good. Now he will start to try to uh, work his way in. And this is where counsel comes in. Counsel is kind of like our spiritual spidey sense. Uh, just like Spider-Man has this tingling sense when evil is around. That is what will happen with us with counsel. We will, have, we will start to begin to recognize the deceits of the evil one. And, and when situations are not right, uh, when there is error, when there is falsehood, when there, uh, whatever it might be, we start, counsel helps us with that. Um, after that, we move to another kind of level of knowledge, but on a deeper level, and this would be understanding. Understanding is different than knowledge because understanding is really tapping into the uh, contemplation. And this comes through silence, this comes through prayer, this comes through a lot of practice, um, and, and just being very open to God. Um, and well formed. You you don't want to really jump, I don't think, into understanding and contemplation unless you're kind of grounded in a good knowledge of the faith because that could be dangerous. And so this would be where we have like the mysticism in the church and the divine mysteries, but but not in a Gnostic sense, not in a secret knowledge of the universe, but truly entering into and filling ourselves up with the divine love and the divine knowledge that comes from the mysteries of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So this is that understanding. Um, that we get to now start to have a sense of a look back and understand, oh, you know, look, looking back, now you're almost on that last rung, you're up on the ladder and you're kind of looking down, and now that fear of the Lord and those pious actions and the knowledge and the, and the attacks from devil, now they're all starting to make sense, come into uh, kind of all, all the dots are starting to align with understanding because you're understanding not just the will of God but maybe the providence a bigger picture here. That's understanding. And then finally, wisdom. This is probably the hardest one to explain because it's just simply to know, to love, to serve, to be one with God. This intimacy. Um, and, 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 and really this, instead of just knowing, but instead of just knowing about, rather, to, to know, right? To know our Lord in intimacy. So there's so many different things you can do with this. So I want to just present a few um, first is, and, and I, I'm not going to really explain this because I don't want the video to be too long, but if you look at, in the diagram to the left, you have some of our heroes in the faith and where every at every level we're on this rung, maybe even going up and down, up and down, just like Jacob saw the angels going up and down. But the penitent, it's important for us to be a penitential person. That would be fear of the Lord. It's important for us to be a pious person, to go to Mass, to pray your rosary, 
to pray the three Hail Marys before you uh, wake up, before you go to bed, or just as you wake up and before you go to bed, to pray before meals, to make the sign of the cross, uh, to bless your children, to wear a scapular. I could go on and on and on, but pious devotions are a good thing, and they remind us constantly of the heavenly mysteries. Um, so we have pious people, very pious people that we see, the saints and also just people around us all the time. Um, then I want to jump to the top. Uh, wisdom, martyrs, people that are willing to die for love, love of God, love of neighbor, a martyr, someone that completely is selfless, willing to give it all. I think they are the ones that perfectly show a love for the, the groom, um, the martyrs in our church. And we have to always ask ourselves, I am not truly in love with Jesus Christ if I would not be willing to be a martyr. I think that's so true. Um, and then the mystic, we have mystics, uh, Carmelite nuns, great mystics in our church. Um, but the, but the, the middle ground, those middle three rungs, so three, four, and five, those are the rungs where I think your average Catholic Joe, you know, your, your militant Catholic, the, those that are right here, right now, living, living, the, um, living the life, running the race, keeping the faith. And, and what are we trying to do? What am I trying to do daily? I'm trying to know God more, all right? And I'm trying to fight the devil, um, fight the flesh, fight, fight the world, trying to uh, stay in the state of grace. And, and, I, and I, I think that's really where the heart of it is. Of course, I still want to have fear of the Lord. I still want to have pious acts. And I, I definitely want to meditate on the mysteries of Christ through silence and it just that, that union. Um, but that's important. That kind of now moves me to three groupings in the latter. The first grouping, fear of the Lord and piety, is really what St. John of the Cross would call the purgative stage. It's a purging, right? You can see how moving from my own sinful ways into God's ways and acts of piety, you can see how that's a, that's a hard thing. That's a purgation, right? So that first two rungs are purgation. The next three rungs are illuminative, illuminative. The light is turned on. I start to have a knowledge of God, uh, a knowledge of the truth, and I start to fight the devil, right? Um, and, and his big bombs and also his subtle ninja tactics. Um, and then the last one is what we would call the unitive stage. And that's that understanding the mysteries of God and having unity with God, a unity with God which would allow us to have the ultimate form of love of neighbor and love of God, uh, that charity. Uh, we can definitely tie in, if you see in pencil, we can tie in the virtues. Uh, there are seven virtues, four cardinal and three theological. Uh, we start with the cardinal virtues, which are true to all people. Temperance. I think temperance helps us to fight sin, that we keep everything in moderation. Then we move to justice with piety. Uh, justice ties with piety because we are giving to God what he is rightly due. And justice towards God, to give God what is rightly due through pious acts, is more important at first. Um, because if we can't be just with God, how can we be just with our neighbor? Uh, prudence is to know a sense of good and evil. That comes through the gift of knowledge. Fortitude and fortitude match perfectly. Uh, counsel means even in the most subtle attacks, we know that we are given the grace to overcome and we know that we have the forgiveness of sins. Faith is the understanding of the mysteries of Christ which have been revealed to us, especially through the gospel. And then ultimately charity, which is to have love of God and love of neighbor and have that complete union with God. Um, so this, again, this has so many different levels, but I think it's very helpful to ground us and realize that we are temporal people, but we are striving for the eternal. There is a wide gap between that temporal and that eternal. That is bridged by Jesus Christ, who is the latter. But it's not simple just to say, oh, there's that ladder there. No, we really need to see that Jesus gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit. He says, I will not leave you orphaned. I will not abandon you. Um, and he gives us his very Holy Spirit to elevate us and move us up this ladder. It is not easy to move up the ladder. That is why we need the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's why we need each other. That's why we need all of these things. So climb that ladder, help other people pull that ladder, and realize that you know, if you're hanging on that first rung of fear of the Lord, remember it's a long, 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 long way down, an eternal way down. That's the pit of hell, which is on the bottom. You don't want to let go of any of those rungs. So if you're just hanging on fear of the Lord, keep it up. If you are just saying, I'm a sinner and I want to get out of this sin, keep it up. If you're doing pious acts, keep it up. If, you, if you're learning, if you're having this vigor of knowledge and you're wanting to surround yourself around Christians that are living the faith and you want to read good books and you want to pray, keep it up. Just keep climbing and don't let go. And, and ultimately what we can all enjoy and we look forward to enjoying is that intimacy with our Lord Jesus Christ who 
is not only the ladder, but he is the ultimate end of that ladder. Um, and he is the one that we love. He is the one that we are climbing towards um, as we ascend this ladder, as we ascend this mountain. Um, so thank you for joining me. Um, continue to climb the ladder and uh, take the time to visit linkedliturgy.com where you'll find fast, free, and faithful resources on the gospel. Also, please check out our online school. That's called Link to Liturgy. Um, dot teachable so link to liturgy dot teachable dot com um, we have a course called the animode course I'll put a link to that um, and then um, yeah just check up those resources have a great uh, day in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen <laughs>